what a wonderful morning. I think today I want to give you a lecture into something advanced inside of Reactor. It is really useful because constant sets, the way we can configure cameras, they allow only static configuration of values like routing triggers. And uh, some people have requested, could this be dynamic? Unfortunately, it is baked into the configuration. So the moment you have saved it, you have changed it inside Reactor, it is written to a JSON file and it's not going to change unless you use the UI. But these values can be indirected through various means. And to show some of that flexibility, I want to um, go through this video. It is going to be advanced, but uh, hopefully you will enjoy it anyway. And some of you are definitely the audience for this. So the first thing I want to do is to set up some PTC cameras because the routing trigger is generally what happens when you have um, some cameras that you want to, to route an auxiliary on an ATEM switch or whatever, a video hub. So let's just add a um, UE70. Yes, okay, I know this is an oldie and a goodie, but um, let's just add a few of these. I think if I hold down shift, I can add a, a, a bunch. It doesn't matter that they are not set up with IP addresses as long as they have different IDs, it's fine. Because what we are going to do today is, is just basically, if I go to the simulator of my PDC uh, view here, then you see I already have these cameras set on my, my camera one, two, three. Now, going back to the home screen, if I press the camera select, so you see I have access to camera naming. So for instance, if I want this to be camera number one, camera number two, and camera number three, I'll just do that. and. In my simulation, you can see that changes the labels in the um, in the view here. Uh, even that could actually be indirected, but I will leave that as an exercise for you to do later. Now, what I wanted to do is to change the routing index. The routing index and tally index are related to if you have a switcher system behind. And um, my go-to switcher system would be an ATEM uh, that I am pretty sure I have on my networks. So let's just see Casper's ATEM Mini is here on the network. So I'll attach that. And you see it's now connected. My ATEM Mini is found with the software controlled here. So that's good. Now for routing trigger, I need to add that ATEM that I just connected to with Reactor. I need to add it and say, I want to use this ATEM switcher for uh, the, the routing that happens when I press the buttons. You'll see what it means in a moment. Uh, but basically I need to set this up as well. So I'll go in here, ATEM route to orcs could be done, but I'll choose preview because that will make it more easy to just spot. And then I'll need to select the ME bus that I'm doing this for. Now, I am ready to demonstrate this right now. So um, the simulation here, just notice what happens when I press my PC view over here on the side. So I'm doing that. You can see I am triggering buttons on, on uh, the uh, PC view. Uh, and if we change to the ATEM software control as I am pressing these buttons. Now I am changing sources on preview. All right. Now, the task for today is to make sure that that source, that routing, that number one, two, and three, which is set inside the camera selector. If we just go over here, uh, I, I could make this like three, four, one, two. All right. Uh, the last one is, doesn't matter because we only have like three cameras on it here. So let me just quickly delete this row. Okay, so we kick out one camera. Now let's go back to the ATEM software control. Um, I think the first one was four. I pressed the first button. Oh, uh, something doesn't work. Routing trigger three, uh, three, four, one. <laughs> I'm old enough to forget really quickly. Okay, so I that was three, that is four, that is one, three, four, one, three, four, one, as I'm pressing those buttons in the simulation tool. Now, <clears throat> or on my PC view. So I want to make these routing indexes dynamic so it can be set somehow dynamically by um, TCP or um, yeah, whatever. Now it will be TCP because this is how I can do it. Um, all right. so. To do that, I'll install another device call. And at first this might seem, let me see, it's not auto discoverable, it's called TCP server. And if I install TCP server, which is like a wonderful toolbox for things you can do by connect, you are creating a TCP server on the blue pill and you can connect to this one and you can change values and those values can be picked up and used inside Reactor. That's what we're gonna do. So it's, it's a really nice Swiss army knife for Reactor in many, many cases and um, I have a different video showing that. Notice this port number, 7923. And I press save. And then I have this device call added in here. Now what this means is I can open a terminal. 
So let's just uh, create a terminal window here. I use, use Netcat. This can be Telnet. And uh, then I connect to the IP address of my Blue Pill device, which is this IP address up there. And then the port number that I just chose. Yes. All right. <laughs> if I type list, I see all the variables that I currently have in the system. So just ignore these. The important thing is that you can now type in int number integer number one equals one, two, three. Now, and it responds back. OK, I set the value of integer number one to one, two, three. If I type in integer number two and to some other value, it is also there. If I type in list, then I can see all the values that I have inside of that. Now, what I can do from within Reactor is to reference these. A quick way to show you could be to, um, let's just see if we uh, click this one and um, we want to go to, I'll just make a user section. So on top of this one, I'll just click it and then I will allow me to, let me see, switch to active behavior to overlay it. Uh, you know what? I think I just want... No, this should be fine. This should be fine. Okay, so I create an empty behavior. And um, inside of that one, I'll just go to default feedback, I will go to text line number one. And inside of this field, I click it, I add a dynamic value, this can be done from a device core, I have a device core associated called CCP server. From this one, I can type in integer. And now I pick an integer uh, value. And then Oh, sorry for these small fields. Okay, maybe I can make this a little bit easier to see. Okay, so I'll pick value from integer number one and I submit. Okay, so this is the reference scar ITSB server variable device yeah, device index that's like one integer number one, submit. And it was not showing what I expected probably because I put in that variable to define my yes, okay, I'll remove this, I should pick this one. Sorry about that little misunderstanding. And ooh, this looks weird. Now, I kind of have two of these. Okay, I got to get rid of this this one. Maybe I need to kind of put the cursor in here and uh, oh, okay, TCP server slash one, which is device number one, that is the one we have integer number one submit and it was your one, two, three. Now if I change this number to maybe I can do it straight in here. If I change this to two, then I'm referring referencing um, the second integer. Okay, so I want to use something like this to to make the indirection. So essentially, where that number one or two goes inside of this one, I want to use the constant set value for routing trigger using that to point to no integer number one, integer number two, integer number three, and then the value of that integer is what is being used to do the routing on the item switcher. All right. So that's that. And I now want to just delete this behavior because that was just to show you that these values from the device core that I just installed exist. Now, uh, it's going to be advanced now, uh, really advanced. And that is because I opened the tree and inside the tree, I need to find the place where the camera selector is. The camera selector is a complex behavior that does a ton of things. It sets the name of the label in the display. It also selects the device index. It selects the right configuration, etc. Let's move into finding it. So inside of normal operation here, camera selector. Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, I think this is the generator that we need to look at. So I identified that then I go in here and the, um, the generator, the generator basically defines or creates pages with the camera selector buttons uh, behaviors automatically from the constant set. And the template behavior we're using is this one, I will open this one up. And you can see there's a ton of stuff going on in here. But if I show JSON, because I prefer doing this in the JSON, then you can see that this whole behavior is defined from what is called a parent ID. In other words, a master behavior. And that master behavior, we, we need to modify that we need to study it and figure out where do we change the value of the routing index constant that is being used. So I will show parent behavior in this window. And if I format the code, I see this is the code that makes up the behavior that drives the camera selection. If I search in this window for route, I think yes, route, route index set route index, do we see something? Yes, actually, here we find if we looked inside the 
constant set, we would see that route index is the name of the constant that is being used to define the routing index. And that is found, if I remember correctly, like four times in here. So if we, we can just pick this one and then one, two, three, four. Okay, so these are like the four places where this is going on. Now, the easiest thing we can do is to just copy paste this code straight into this field. And because all we have in here is the reference to the parent ID, we can just paste in that parent behavior straight in there and now we can make our changes. So what we need to find is once again, uh, see if we can find that route, oops, sorry about that, uh, route index. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that's the variable. We, we need to find every place this is being said, okay? And I am now selecting them. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down Command D, probably on Windows, it's it's Control D or something. That selects all of the places where this one is found. And instead of referencing this, I want to reference our device core, which is DC colon Skahoy TCP server slash one slash int slash ah. Uh, da, da, da. And then I put in mm, that. Okay. I'm just, um, I, mm, I'm a little bit unsure if this is going to work everywhere. Now it's, it's fine for this particular location. Uh, so basically what I do is I use that routing index and put it in as the reference to the dimension for the integer, the integer number, basically. Okay, let me just move forward to the next place I find this. Does it look right? Yes, it's not too way off. Now, the thing is, there are two places here where this is not going to work. This is fine, this is fine. But the reason why it's not fine right here is because I should encapsulate all of this. And we have it now two places. I want it to be, I don't know if I can do that but I want to have curly braces around this. The reason why I need curly braces is because the value of the device calls integer here needs to be inserted as a dimension. And since it has slashes inside of it, it will spoil the, um, like the outer IO reference flag, routing source, white, slash. And it was fine when it was just behavior, colon, cons, colon, route index, but it's not fine anymore because there are slashes inside. So you can always encapsulate such a device call in curly braces. They are implicit. And now we need, we need to do it explicitly here. Actually, this will make it work. So I'll just save this. And um, I think if I, if I press my, my route here, uh, going to the simulation, and now if I press these buttons, then I'm pretty sure that we'll see some non-existing behavior over here on the ATEM switcher, essentially, because these values are not being used. We cannot really monitor it. But what I want to do to convince you that this is actually happening correctly behind the scene is to change these values to set integer number one to, to three, set integer two to two, set integer number three to one. So it's now being reverse. Let's just check list. Okay, integer one, two, three is three, two, one. All right, now I press the first button, second button, third button. Uh, almost, 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 almost. See, the reason why it doesn't work, something worked, but it is because the condition we set up is that we just want to go with a forward named like routing index one, two, three. All right, one, two, three. So we just keep that one, two, three. So camera one, two, three points to integer one, two, three, and then it's being translated. So let's just try this once again. We go back to the ASM software control. Now press the camera button number one. There we go. This is three. Camera button two, that's two. And camera button one, that's one. So I got it sorted out, making this indirection through a device code to make a dynamic translation of the otherwise fixed constant set in this case. You can do the same for tally. You can probably do the same for, for if, if you want the, the names of the cameras to be dynamic in this way, you can do it. And at least it shows you that reactor can be pretty complex and it can be pretty powerful. It just depends on how much you want to invest into learning the system underneath it is so beautifully structured. It is possible to do anything through the JSON configuration that underlies everything the UI is doing for you. So if this was confusing to you, absolutely fine. 
you are not required to work inside the tree, inside these advanced methods. You can go by what we normally uh, promote to people, namely the paging paradigm here, where it's just like click and do stuff. But you can always dive in. And that's the beauty of Reactor.